Miss Snow, I'm sure you're aware of the fact that this church owes over $2 million. I'm afraid we couldn't get 20 cents credit if we put up the tabernacle as security. Ever since the government took over the church properties and assets 11 years ago, it's cost us millions to try and recover them. And still we haven't succeeded. Now, I don't want to appear to be an alarmist, President Snow, but with this indebtedness, the church is truly in bondage. Now, for instance, these notes are due and payable. Some are past due. And the end is not in sight. That's true, Brother Gage. The end is not in sight. Brethren, no one realizes the financial distress we are in more than I. But at present, I am at loss as to what to do. Financially, the church is in a bottomless pit. In the very depths of poverty. But we mustn't give up hope nor become too discouraged. The Lord will help us work this out in his own way and in his own due time. Of this I am sure. <clears throat> that was a good breakfast, Mother. You're just feeling good this morning, dear. Yes, I feel considerably better. But it was still an extra good breakfast. Thank you. Will you excuse me, please, Father? Yeah, just a moment, son. Sit down, will you? I have something to say to you and your mother. I've got to go to St. George, and I'd like you both to go with me. St. George? Well, what's the reason for the trip, Father? That's such a difficult trip, Lorenzo. Well, Do you well, think you could stand it? Do you have to it? go? Wait a minute. <laughs> Hold on. One at a time. Mother, I'm taking you along to look after me. And if the Lord wants me to go to St. George, I'm sure he will bless me with the health and strength necessary to enable me to stand the journey. And son, I don't know yet why I've been called to go to St. George, but I do know that I must go. We'll be leaving on the Pullman train just as soon as everything can be arranged. And who will be going with you, President? Uh, just as many of the general authorities as can be spared from the important work here. And they'll take their wives. Now, uh, do you have the information necessary for the telegram to President MacArthur? Yes, thank you. Put your mind at ease, President. Sister Irvine and I will attend to all the details. Well, that's very fine. Thank you. That'll be all, Sister Irvine. Thank you, President. Oh, by the way, that's certainly a terrible drought they're having in St. George. The driest season in many years, according to reports. I do hope you don't dry up and blow away down there, President. You ought to know me better than that, George. It takes more than little Dixie hot air to melt this snow. <laughs> <laughs> Our ultimate destination will be St. George, and our purpose will be to hold a special conference. Please arrange to have five teams and carriages meet us at the rail terminus at Modena. Expect to arrive 7 a.m. May the 27th. That sounds all right. Uh, please sign that to uh, Secretary George F. Gibbs in behalf of President Lorenzo Snow. Thanks, ma'am. <laughs>
President Snow. President McArthur. It's a pleasure to have you and Sister Snow visit with us. This is our son, Leroy. Hello. And nice to have you too, Leroy. Thank you. Did you have a good trip? Ooh, as good as could be expected. I suppose the worst part of the journey lies ahead. Oh, it shouldn't be too bad this time of year. We can make St. George by nightfall, if we hurry. Is it that far? Lorenzo, do you think you can stand it? <laughs> there are no two ways about it, Mother. I've just got to stand it. Sister MacArthur. How do you do? Princess Snow, you must have had a tiring journey. Yes, I'm very tired. It will only take me a few minutes to fix all of you a bite of supper. Oh, I appreciate your thoughtfulness, Sister MacArthur. That'll be fine for the others. But if you wouldn't mind, I believe I'm too tired to bother with supper. If I could just have a bowl of bread and milk. Of course, President Snow. Thank you. Thank you, son. I feel awfully thirsty. I'll get you a glass of water. Oh. Lorenzo, I was afraid this journey would be too hard on you. The trip was hard enough, all right, Mother. But that, that isn't what's bothering me. The Lord has called me to St. George, but why? Why? Why have I brought so many of the general authorities when we're so needed at home to look after the important affairs of the church? If he'd only make his will Manifest to me. Let's get you to bed, Lorenzo. You must save your strength for the conference tomorrow. Yes, Mother. Yes.
as you all know, this has been the driest winter in 35 years. And the winter before, the driest in 34 years. The Pine Valley Mountain, usually covered with snow, is comparatively barren. Conditions have been very discouraging to the saints in this area, President. Most of us were sent here by President Brigham Young, and we have done our best. We don't want to leave all of this, President, and we haven't given up hope, not yet. But with the lucerne and grain drying up, and this terrible drought, it's going to take a power greater than our own to save us. It is now my great honor to present our prophet, President Lorenzo Snow. My brothers and sisters, I feel to sympathize with all of you because of the drought conditions. On the journey here from Odina, we couldn't help but see the dead and dying cattle, the dried up streams. May I say unto you, even though we are not suffering as badly from the drought up north, the yoke of oppression is resting heavily on the church because of our indebtedness. During the past year, it became necessary to issue bonds with brothers and sisters. This is not the real answer. The church must find some other way to pay its bills. We must find a permanent solution to our financial problems. Now, I, I don't know exactly why the Lord has called me to St. George. But I know he has called me here for a special purpose, for a reason which I feel he will bless us. If brothers and sisters, I understand clearly now wherein we as a people are failing to walk up to the covenants we have made. I realize that we are neglecting one of the most sacred laws, the law of tithing. The time has now come for every Latter-day Saint who calls himself a saint to pay his tithing in full from this day forward. That is the word of the Lord to you, and it will be the word of the Lord to every settlement throughout Zion. This is the answer to our financial problems. Even though as a church we are heavily in debt, 
I say unto you that if this people will pay a full and honest tithing, the shackles of indebtedness will be removed from us and we will yet become a prosperous people. Listen to what the Holy Scriptures say on the subject. Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, Wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. Ye are cursed with a curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruit of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. I also feel to give you a promise pertaining to your parched lands. If you people here will observe this law fully and honestly from now on, you may go ahead and plow your land, plant your seed. And I promise you in the name of the Lord that in due time clouds will gather the latter rains from heaven will descend. Your lands will be watered. The rivers and ditches will be filled. And you will yet reap a harvest this very season. I think we'd better call a special meeting of the brethren tonight to discuss some of these matters before we leave for home. Are we driving directly back to Salt Lake, President? No, brethren. We're going to stop at each town on the way home and preach tithing. And after I get home, I'm going to preach tithing. At what time is the meeting called for tonight? Let us say 7 o'clock. I will meet you then at 7 o'clock. Right. Will you excuse me now, brethren? Certainly. Sure. Sure. Wasn't it simply marvelous, the change that came over the president? Yes, but that promise. I don't know. I'm afraid it's too late in the season to plant crops now. My land's so dry, my plow can't get a decent bite. Brethren, you just heard the prophet of the Lord promise us rain and crops. That's good enough for me. I'm going to plant. coming when the Lord will require us to stand up and do that which he has commanded and not neglect it any longer. There is no man or woman in this church who will feel satisfied 
if he or she fails to pay a full tithing. And verily, it is a day of sacrifice and a day for the tithing of my people. For he that is tithed shall not be burned at his coming. For what is a man profited if he gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? The penalty following disobedience to the law of tithing is that the disobedient shall not live among the people of God. But through this law, the blessings of prosperity and success will be given to the saints. If the saints pay their tithing, not only will the church be relieved of its great indebtedness, but through the blessings of the Lord, this will also be the means of freeing the Latter-day Saints from their individual obligations, and they will become a prosperous people. Oh. Hello, brethren. Hi, Bishop. Here's my tent. Fine. Here's one of my chickens for tithing, Bishop. Say, are the rest of your chickens as nice as this one, Tad? Well, almost as good, Bishop. I thought the Lord ought to have the best one. Bless you, boy. Just wonderful, Brother Gibbs. The saints are catching the spirit of the law of tithing. And the good people of Dixie are not only paying a tenth, but must be giving all they have to the Lord's work. Oh, that's the one I've been looking for, Brother Gibbs. You open it, will you, please? Corn, sun burning it up. I don't know how we're going to keep ahead of it. We can't hand water all summer long. just don't understand it, Mother. It's been over a month since the President was here, and still no sign of rain. If it doesn't rain before long, I don't know how I'm going to face the saints. <laughs> don't cry. Don't cry, Mother. The prophet of the Lord promised us rain. It'll come.
ready, Lorenzo. I don't believe I care for anything tonight. I'm going to my room. Don't you feel well, dear? I feel all right. I'm just not hungry, that's all. My anxious soul. Why was I inspired to make those promises to the good people in St. George if they are not to be fulfilled? I promised them, dear Lord, that if they would accept thy command to obey the law of tithing, thou wouldst send the rains from heaven and bless them with the bounteous harvest. These good people accepted thy word and are not only paying a tenth of their income, but are offering all they have to thy cause. Wilt thou please vindicate the words of thy humble servant, through whom thou didst speak? Telegram, President. Thank you, Billy Gibbs. Thank you. Thank the Lord. Oh, thank the Lord. It's rain, Sister Irvine. Rain. They have rain in St. George. I do to show my appreciation for the blessing which thou hast given to the good people in St. George. Thou hast fulfilled thy promise to them and vindicated the words spoken to thy servant. Do show me some special thing that I can do to further prove my love for thee. 
Thou canst not ask anything of me that I am not willing to do, even though it be the offering of my life to prove my love for thee.